like to welcome you to our evening service here in Cunningham Memorial Presbyterian Church as you join with us for this time of worship uh, via Facebook or YouTube on the podcast or through our DVDs and CDs. As we have announced before, as a congregation, we will endeavor for the duration of the current crisis to continue to provide uh, these means of communication whereby you will be able to join with us for a time of worship on the Lord's Day at 11.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Again, it is our intention to provide a short uh, devotional midweek message, usually on a Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock, and details will be posted on the congregation's Facebook page. Today, as I announced this morning, is my final Sunday with you as the minister of Cunningham Memorial Presbyterian Church uh, because retirement has come. And again, I want to say a little bit more about that uh, in the sermon this evening. Reverend David McGacky will be continuing as the congregation's associate minister. Uh, and during the present crisis, if anyone in the congregation needs any pastoral care, David may be contacted at 28 You may also, if the need arises, uh, contact your district elder or our clerk of session, Mr. Leonard Wiseman, at 28 2588-1211. The Reverend Albert Baxter, Minister of First Port Glenone Presbyterian Church, has been appointed by the Presbytery of Balamina as the convener of the vacancy, and he will be responsible for overseeing all matters pertaining to the vacancy and the process which in time will lead to the call of a new minister. We come now to, to worship God and as we do so, we want to recall some familiar uh, words from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give the peace. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Our Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity of being able to, to gather uh, wherever we may be this evening, to gather for this time of worship, to center our thoughts around your word. And as we so gather, and as we watch and listen, Pray, Father, that you will bless us each one. And even though we are separated from each other and physically disconnected from each other, we thank you that in faith we are one in Christ. We are members of your family, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we thank you for that like common faith that joins us all together. Pray that you will bless our time of worship. Bless your word to all of our hearts. Father, help us to learn uh, lessons from it, lessons that will encourage us and strengthen us and guide us for the days that lie before us. Forgive our sins wherein we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and enable us more and more to walk in the paths of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We turn again uh, now to Psalm 119. And I want to, to read uh, the passage which we read this morning, uh, the 17th stanza or section of the psalm. And we start our commence our, we commence our reading at verse 129, reading through to verse 136. Let us hear the word of God. Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou used to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, 
and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of water run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Amen. And may God bless this, his word, to all of our hearts. We want to join together uh, once again in prayer as we come together for our prayers of intercession. And as we do so, of course, we remember the current situation in which we find ourselves in. Let us pray together. Our Father, we do indeed remember the situation uh, brought about by the coronavirus. We remember those who have been impacted by it and those who have suffered and lost loved ones because of it and those who are laid aside with sickness and illness at this time. We pray for all again in our National Health Service and all involved in the medical profession in whatever way they may be involved. And we thank you for uh, the gifts and the talents and the knowledge that you have given to them and how all of these resources are being utilized to help to combat the virus and to bring help and healing and comfort to those who are in need. Father, we pray indeed that you will continue to bless those who are set in authority over us, those who have the responsibility to make important decisions that formulate policies with respect to the future. Pray that you will give them guidance Give them understanding, give them wisdom, and be to them all that they would need. Our Father, we pray now that you'll bless us as a, as a congregation, uh, not gathered together in one place, but perhaps uh, scattered in different places around the country and indeed in different countries around the world. But Father, we thank you that you have brought us together through the means of modern technology and that we have this opportunity to, to learn from your word and to be encouraged and strengthened by it. So be with us now and continue to bless us, for we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. We return uh, this evening to the, the 17th stanza or section of Psalm 119. And we do so in order to look at the two remaining points of the three that I made reference to this morning in relation to it. Those three points sought to acknowledge, uh, recognize, and emphasize the central theme or message of this great psalm, which has to do with the wonder or the sweetness, the dependability and the durability of the Word of God. And they related to the wonder of God's word in saving us, the wonder of God's word in, in steering us, and the wonder of God's word in soothing us. The wonder of God's word in saving us, that is, in being able to make us wise unto the way of salvation, was the point that we looked at this morning. And in looking at it, I was able to share how God used his word in my life and in the life of my wife Helen as a light to point out to us and to draw us in saving faith to the one who is the light of the world, namely his Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, this morning I referred to that time um, in our lives when we were both converted to Jesus Christ, a time which marked the beginning of our service for the Lord and which in the providence of God brought us here 22 years ago to minister in this congregation of Cunningham Memorial, Kalibaki. And I made reference to all of this because, as you know, retirement has come, and today marks the end of our ministry. When you come to the end of any particular period of time to which you have been called or appointed, it's not unusual uh, to find yourself in a reflective frame of mind as you look back over the years and remember all that has happened and all that you have been privileged to share with others, 
This morning I shared with you the wonder of God's word and my salvation, and also with you the personal privilege that has been mine over the past 22 years to preach that word here and to see many of all ages come to profess faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior. The psalmist says in verse 129 to verse 130, Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. The wonder of God's word in saving us, in revealing to us the light of the gospel, and pointing to us the one who is the light of the world, and as such making us wise unto the way of salvation. But the second point that I want us now to look at in this section of the psalm, and in the light of the declaration that the psalmist made in verse 129 concerning the wonder of the word of God, is that God's word is also wonderful in steering us. That is, it is wonderful in giving to us guidance and direction, the guidance and direction that we need as we live out the Christian life to the blessing of our own souls, to the benefit of others, and of course, first and foremost, for the glory of God. The psalmist in verse 133 acknowledges the necessity of having and knowing God's word in order to be steered in the right direction. He says there, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. We thought about this truth of God's word in steering us and in guiding us when we looked at verse 105 of the psalm some months ago now. That verse is perhaps one of the, uh, the best known verses in the in, in the psalm, if not in the Bible. For there the psalmist says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here the word becomes the lamp and the light that the psalmist needs to keep him on the right path, to steer him away from the wrong path and to bring him through the dark path. Order my steps in your word, he says. And it is a great blessing to us in life that God has not left us alone to find our own way, but that he has given to us his word to be the lamp and the light that we need. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, in his commentary on the Psalms entitled The Treasury of David, says this about the value and the worth of God's word in steering us. He says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, we are walkers through the city of this world and we are often called to go out into its darkness. Let us never venture there without the light giving word, lest we slip with our feet. Each man should use the word of God personally, practically and habitually that he may see his way and see what lies in it. When darkness settles down upon all around me, the word of the Lord like a flaming torch reveals my way. Having no fixed lamps in the eastern towns, in olden times, each passenger carried a lantern with him that he might not fall. This is a true picture of our path through this dark world. We should not know the way or how to walk in it if Scripture, like a blazing torch, did not reveal it. One of the most practical benefits of Holy Scripture is guidance in the acts of daily life. It is not sent to astound us with brilliance, but to guide us by its instruction. It is true the head needs illumination, but even more, the feet need direction, else head and feet may both fall into a ditch. Happy is the man who personally appropriates God's word and practically uses it 
as his comfort and counselor, a lamp to his own feet. And in so recognizing all of this, the psalmist says in verse 133, order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Over the past 22 years, it has been my privilege here in the congregation to officiate at 132 weddings. And at the end of each marriage uh, service, I would give to the newly married couple a copy of God's Word uh, as a gift to mark the occasion. And with the prayerful desire that they will read it, that they will read it together as husband and wife, and that it will become for them a lamp unto their feet and a light for their path in this new chapter of married life together. The wonder of God's word in saving us, the wonder of God's word in steering us, and then thirdly, the wonder of God's word in soothing us. To soothe means such things as to calm, to comfort, to ease, to settle, and to bless. Over the years of my ordained ministry, the reading and sharing of God's word has been an important part of the pastoral work. It is often the case that as a minister, pastoral work has brought me into contact with people at particularly difficult times in their lives. Maybe it is at a time of sickness, a time of terminal sickness, a time of bereavement, or sometimes when death has come as the result of an accident or some other incident in tragic, sudden, and unexpected circumstances. As a minister, when you enter a home or a hospital ward on such occasions, it's not easy to know what to say, how to say it, what to do or what not to do. Any amount of practical theology lectures in college can never fully or properly prepare you for such times. And when they occur, there comes that deep and penetrating realization and reminder that only God can provide. That I can't do this in my own strength. To him I must turn and acknowledge my total dependence upon him. Many times I have driven to and walked down the corridors of our hospitals in Antrim and Belfast and in other places. And I've prayed with fervency for the Lord to help me, to help me in his name minister to those who need his help. I'm asking the Lord to shine his face upon me so that in his service and in his name, I will be able to bring soothing to those who need it. The psalmist says in verse 135 here, make your face to shine upon your servant. The psalmist in his ministry needed to know the presence of the Lord because he couldn't do what he knew needed to be done on his own strength. And that was why he valued, and that was why he cherished the precious word of God. When the room or the ward is entered, and when from a human perspective it's hard to know what to say, the best thing to do is to open up the word and let the Lord himself speak. In the Bible, there is a vast reservoir of soothing and comforting verses. Verses that have brought consolation to many an anxious soul. Verses that have enlightened many a sick room. And verses that have cheered many a dying heart. I remember in my ministry here visiting a man who spent a long time in hospital before he died. And upon reading the scriptures and praying with him, his response always was, that has been very helpful. The word bringing soothing. The psalmist says, make 
thy face to shine upon thy servant. In these words we are led to think about the Old Testament benediction known as the Aaronic Blessing found in number 6. I quoted this at the beginning of the service. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Two years ago when you as a congregation made a presentation of a gift to Helen and me on the occasion of our 20th anniversary of ministry here, I made the point that over those years we had seen many changes and that in that period of time I had conducted almost 500 funerals. That figure has risen in the intervening two-year period and represents much by way of change since we first came here. As I said this morning, I can look around the meeting house and still see the faces of many of those who have died during the ministry. I can see where they normally sat. and Remember the fellowship that we shared. And for some of them, I was in their bedroom or I was in their hospital ward when they breathed their last and passed into eternity. And I have to say that it was a privilege to be with them and with their loved ones at such a deeply personal family moment. And the memories of such will remain with me for the rest of my days. In time when I conducted their funeral, I made the point that we were gathering to do three things to pay our respects, yes we were, to offer our sympathy, yes we gathered to do that, and then to turn to God's word for soothing, for comfort, for hope and assurance. You see, it is to the word we must go. This is the recurring theme of Psalm 119. And as the psalmist asked the Lord, in verse 135, to shine his face upon him. So I trust that you will know the Lord's face shining upon you because you have put your faith and trust in him and in him alone for your salvation, for the salvation of your soul, that in turning to Christ you have been saved and you know that when you pass through the valley of the shadow of death and the journey here on earth ends, that you will go to heaven to be with the Lord forevermore. When I was ordained to the ministry in January 1990, I affirmed the following. So far as you know your own heart are the call of God, zeal for his glory, love for the Lord Jesus Christ, and a desire for the salvation of men and women through the power of the Holy Spirit, your central motives in offering yourself for the ministry. A desire for the salvation of men and women through the power of the Holy Spirit. That has been my desire in ministering where God has led that men and women and young people will seek the Lord for salvation and so know that when the journey of life here comes to an end, that they will be with the Lord in heaven for all eternity. That death will be the gateway to heaven. We have all been thinking a lot about death in recent times because of the coronavirus. We get daily bulletins telling us how many have died as a result of it. And death hangs over us, hangs over all of us like a cloud. When someone goes into hospital, we are concerned more than usual. And if they get home, we rejoice. Helen's brother was in hospital recently, and when he got home, his neighbors went out into their front gardens, and they applauded him in what was a very emotional moment for him. Before the coronavirus, we never did things like that. 
But the virus has caused us to think more and more about the uncertainty of life and of the fleeting nature of all things here. In the light of such, we must be ready for eternity. And we can be ready when we repent of our sin and ask the Lord Jesus Christ in faith to be our Savior. Believe in him, receive him, and serve him. And one day in his time, live with him. Tonight we leave our ministry here in Cunningham Memorial Presbyterian Church, Cullibaggy. And we do so under strange and unusual circumstances. And because of the coronavirus, we'll not be able to say our goodbyes face to face as we would have liked. But perhaps we'll have the opportunity sometime later on to do so. The psalmist asked the Lord in verse 135, to shine his face upon him as we retire from our ministry. Helen and I leave you with the benediction of number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May it indeed be so. God bless you all. Amen and amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this night and forevermore. Amen.